Hi there, welcome to another video session uh, with Talk Financials. Um, I'm Johnny Wraith and as usual, um, I'll give some initial comments about our focus today, which is Kingfisher and Wix. Um, it's actually a slightly different video to what we normally do, looking at two different companies uh, in a similar market, comparing and contrasting their accounts and trying to pick out some interesting um, dynamics and statistics from that. Um, most of the hard yards are being done as usual by Ted, my colleague Ted Wayman, who's going to take us through those accounts um, uh, and uh, and draw some interesting information out of them. As always, uh, this is not um, formal investment advice, it's just some opinions, some highlights, some interesting conclusions and views um, uh, from us. Um, as I say, Kingfisher and Wix, who are they? Well, they're both uh, involved in the, the home improvement business, primarily um, UK-based retailers, uh, home and garden supplies, that sort of thing. Kingfisher, much the bigger company. Um, it's got over 1,300 stores in the UK and eight other European countries. Big, well-known brands like B&Q, Castorama, Screwfix, um, uh, and... Uh, um, employs something like 80,000 people uh, in its business. Wix, although, as I say, involved in similar market on a smaller scale in the UK, focused in the UK, um, 230 stores, so um, significantly fewer than Kingfisher, uh, employs about a tenth of the number of people, about 8,000 people. And as you'll see when Ted's looking at the, the market cap and the scale of these companies, it is about a tenth of the size. But, you know, different geographical areas, different sectors, different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see what those are. Uh, as usual, Ted will also look at the share price, see how they've been performing, both in an outright sense and relative to each other. Who's doing better? Why are they doing better? Um, and he'll also run the rule, as he always does, over how the CEOs and the, the, the senior management of these companies are rewarded um, and tease out some other interesting information. So uh, we'll sort of uh, join up again at the end of his presentation, um, talk about some of the interesting things that have come out um, uh, and see if we can come up with any sort of conclusions or views as to which of these companies uh, maybe is the more attractive or whether they're both unattractive, who knows. So um, without further ado, uh, I will hand it to take us through this. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Good to see you again. And also good to see all of our viewers. Um, welcome back. If you are a subscriber, if you are not a subscriber, please do click the subscribe button now. Um, so Wix and Kingfisher, let's have a look first of all at Kingfisher. So as Johnny said, um, Kingfisher is the largest of the companies. Oh, by the way, um, uh, just to sort of remind our viewers that this is actually a request um, so this is Mellow Market, Markable, um, Mellow Markable, that's a good name. Um, an interesting video would be a comparison between, for example, Wix and Kingfisher, owner of B&Q. So um, here is the video for Mellow Marka, Markable. Um, and if you are a subscriber, um, then you can leave uh, any requests you have in the comments box. So please don't forget to like, share and, of course, subscribe. So let's have a look at Kingfisher. This is Kingfisher's annual report and accounts, 2122. Um, and in the annual report and accounts, available on their website, as ever, lots of information about who they are, what they do. We've given you a very brief overview of the company, but if you are looking to join them, uh, maybe you're going to be employed by them, maybe you're looking to get a job with them, maybe you're looking to supply to them, maybe you're looking to buy from them, um, then uh, these uh, financial statements will give you lots and lots of information. Um, so we are going to whiz through all that information and we're going to jump to the uh, the income statement. The income statement uh, you'll see here is on page uh, 122 of uh, about 198, nearly a 200 page report. So quite a lot of information there. So here we go. Top line sales. So we are looking at the um, uh, the top line sales. Um, and the top line sales for these guys, uh, we're in uh, millions of pounds. There we go, millions of pounds. Um, top line sales, about 13 billion pounds. OK, so just to sort of uh, put that into context, uh, let's jump over to um, uh, uh, Wix. Here's Wix. Um, and uh, for Wix, again, same story, lots of information about the company. Whiz all the way down through to the numbers. 
um, uh, which uh, are down here on page. Um, here we go. Uh, uh, that's the balance sheet. So here's the income statement for, for Wix. Um, uh, and we're on page, uh, just so you've got a note, 112 of 167. Um, and uh, you can see that I've just highlighted it, the um, the sales for these guys, 1.5 billion. So Kingfisher is uh, you know, nearly nine times, you know, we're getting almost 10 times as big. It's uh, 8.59, so 8.6 times in terms of revenue. So there's our kind of our first um, sort of major comparison. Kingfisher cost of sales, 8.2 billion. Um, that's a margin of about 63%. 37%, 37%, then they've got their kind of costs of running the business, leaving them with an operating profit of 1.1 billion, that's 9%. Little bit of interest, suggesting they're carrying a little bit of um, a little bit of debt, a little bit of um, uh, 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 tax, uh, and the profit for the year, 843 million pounds, a 6% net margin. Okay, so the key numbers 37% gross margins, 9% uh, operating margins, 6% um, uh, net margin. So to compare that uh, with um, Wix, uh, here is Wix. Wix cost of sales, 966 million pounds. Pounds again, 63%. So very interesting. Both of them operating on gross profit margins of 37%. So remember what that means is that when you buy a, I don't know, a bag of screws for a pound from one of these companies, it's costing them 63p to buy that bag of screws and they're making 37p on that sale. Um, again, operating costs, Wix a little bit higher, relatively speaking, 31% compared with Kingfisher's 29%, leaving uh, Wix with an operating profit margin of 6% compared with Kingfisher's 9%, maybe reflecting the fact that Wix is a little bit smaller and therefore carrying a little bit more overhead relative to the size of the business. Um, again, there's a little bit of financing costs um, uh, and uh, some tax to pay uh, and their bottom line, 58, no, nearly 60 million pounds is a 4% net margin compared with 6% for Kingfisher. So they're both profitable. They're both pretty low in terms of the bottom line, um, uh, but very, very similar structure in their income statement. So that's quite interesting there. OK, let's go and look at their balance sheet uh, and see what the balance sheet is telling us. Um, so if we just jump back to uh, uh, Kingfisher, here's Kingfisher's um, balance sheet. And uh, in King. Sheet, so in terms of their assets, total assets are about 12, uh, 12 billion. Um, and those total assets made up of 8.4 billion of non-current assets as the things they need to run the business. And the biggest number there is um, their property, plant and equipment. Now, quite interesting with these guys, um, they've got property, plant and equipment. They've also got some investments. OK, so this is investments in joint ventures and associates. So this will be where they own 50 percent of another company or 40 percent or 30 percent where they have you know reasonable amount of influence but they don't own the whole company if they own the whole company then they would have to consolidate those results into here uh, and if they'd bought the entire company it gives rise to goodwill so these guys have grown through expansion they've grown by buying other companies and it looks to me like maybe there's a kind of a uh, a strategy of taking an initial investment in a company, uh, making sure that, you know, they're happy with the kind of the way it's run um, uh, and then maybe then taking a, a, a bigger stake and, and then ultimately buying it out, for example. So that 8.4 billion is, uh, you know, more, you know, most of that is investments that are reflected in the investments or the growth through um, uh, 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 through expansion, uh, uh, growth through um, uh, acquisition rather than organic growth. Um, if we look at Wix, on the other hand, um, here is Wix. Uh, we just zoom up a little bit on their non-current assets. Very little goodwill. OK, so very little goodwill. These guys have been growing organically. So there is the property, plant and equipment. So a much smaller balance sheet um, reflecting the fact that they're growing organically. They're not growing through acquisition. We come on then to look at the current assets. So uh, we move back to um, over here. 
here's the current assets. I'm going to look at the current assets uh, compared to the um, to the current liabilities. Um, so I'm going to kind of look at these two numbers together. <laughs> current assets, you'll remember, are the things that we own that we either um, uh, uh, that are either cash or going to become cash soon. And the biggest number for these guys is, of course, the um, uh, the inventory. That's all the all the 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 the, 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 the power tools on the shelves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not a lot of trade and other receivables because these are cash businesses. When you walk into B and Q, you pay at the checkout, so they don't really do in accounts receivable, and they do have some cash. Um, biggest liability there accounts payable, and we always like to just double check on the current assets to the current liabilities. There it is, um, and this is their liquidity ratio. So I can tell you that, for example, for Kingfish. Um, their liquidity ratio is a reasonably healthy 1.36. So not too bad there. Sorry, no, it's not. Um, I'm reading the wrong number. It is a 1.27. Okay, so uh, liquidity ratio is 1.27. Now, um, uh, go back to uh, uh, Wix. Here is Wix. Let's get that over a little bit. There we go. Um, so uh, again, um, for the Wix, again, very large inventory or relatively large inventory, relatively smaller trade and other receivables and some cash sitting in the um, uh, in the bank. Um, and over on the other side, we've got the um, the liabilities. Um, uh, we're looking at this bottom bit down here. This is the kind of the current liabilities, things we have to pay soon. Um, and uh, biggest liability is the 241, uh, 242 million that they owe to their suppliers. And again, we can do this little check of comparing current assets to current liabilities. And we see that they also have a, a current ratio of about 1.19 for these guys as opposed to 1.27. So a little bit low, but liquidity does not appear to be an issue. Now, what does appear to be an issue on the face of it is this number here. So this is a very, very big number, relatively. Uh, and um, the acid test, most many of you, many of our viewers will be familiar with the acid test, is where we eliminate um, this number here. And then we just look at the, the other um, uh, uh, current assets and compare those to the current liabilities. And that actually gives us for Kingfisher, um, that gives us a ratio of 0.38. So Kingfisher, very dependent on their ability to sell that inventory. And obviously, you know, if it screws, maybe they sell them reasonably quickly, but some of those power tools will be sitting around for a little bit longer. OK, so on average, I can tell you that Kingfisher, it takes them 116 days to sell their inventory. OK, so 116 days to sell their inventory. Quite a long time. Whereas Wix, they can sell it within 62 days. However, on the balance side, because Kingfisher is very, very retail focused, uh, their accounts receivable are only eight days, whereas Wix, interesting enough, obviously are running accounts with their um, uh, a lot of their, uh, their customers uh, and their average accounts receivable is about 41 days. Kingfisher is taking 111 days to pay their suppliers, as opposed to Wix, who are taking 93 days. So both of them quite a long time. So if you're going to be supplying these guys, um, uh, get ready for some hard payment term negotiations. Um, but what's interesting is that for you know both of those companies, they end up with a working capital requirement of almost break even. So cash in, cash out happens almost on the same day. It's actually about 13 days for Kingfisher and nine days for Wix. Now, these are very approximate numbers because I'm only dealing with the financial statements. I don't have any detail behind that. Um, but it's quite interesting that, you know, that really the summary is that Kingfisher um, holds a lot of stock for a long time, doesn't have any accounts receivable, but pays its suppliers quite late. Uh, Wix, on the other hand, holds its inventory for much shorter time, but still has to wait to get paid by its customers and, and therefore, again, is pushing back on the accounts payable. So I think that's quite an interesting one. And, 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 and that kind of, you know, you know, that acid test is it's OK as long as they can kind of keep that stock shifting. Um, now, of course, you know, if you start hitting cost of living crises and, you know, people stop doing building work, for example, then, you know, maybe that's going to become uh, a little bit of a problem for these guys. So there's a kind of just a little potential, um, you know, maybe a, an Achilles heel there that they are dependent on, you know, everything going tickety boo, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in terms of uh, the the, the non-current liabilities, 
uh, uh, so for um uh, for uh, 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 Wix, um, actually let's start with um uh, 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 Kingfisher. So Kingfisher, their non-current liabilities. Um, you know, most of the non-current liabilities is this lease liability. Now we've talked about this before. Lease liabilities. These two numbers together are basically what's funding. Um, the kind of the right of use assets here. So and that will be driving the um, uh, the interest payments on their income statement. And it's the same uh, for Wix. They've got these lease liabilities. Um, uh, here they are. Uh, and uh, those are driving the kind of the right of use assets, which are one of these two numbers over here. We can kind of just see uh, which one it is. It's that it's that six. Um, so they're kind of driving. Um, uh, uh, you need to kind of take those those numbers together. Uh, and again, that's going to be driving the um, uh, the. Uh, 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 it, it, it interest payments. Now, there's a little bit of a mismatch you can see between 604 of asset and 660 and 81 of liabilities. But don't forget, the lease liabilities is when do you pay for those leases? And the 604 will just be the um, the net book value. That's the asset uh, which is being depreciated. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that kind of <coughs> that that mismatch. Um, uh, and it's just to sort of remember. So these guys aren't really carrying any debt as such. Um, the, the, the debt in inverted commas is merely uh, sort of commitments on the leases of some of their property, plant and equipment. So um, what do we say that um, uh, 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 these guys are making a profit? Um, uh, Kingfish is making a profit. What are they doing with that profit? Well, um, uh, we can find out by looking on their um, movement in equity. Here it is. So the movement in equity. Um, so there's the profit for the year, 643, sorry, uh, 843 million. Uh, and what are they doing? Um, they're doing a little bit of purchase of own shares and they are paying out dividends. So about half of it is being a, a share buyback uh, and half of it is um, being distributed. And and that looks like it can be maintained. So that what they're spending there is, you know, nearly a 500 million pounds um, of a retained profit of 843. So there is reinvestment back into the business going on as well. But these guys are paying, you know, you're getting a dividend income and you're getting capital growth in your shares, we hope, um, uh, from Kingfisher. We'll look at the share price performance a little bit later on. Uh, for Wix, um, this is their movement in equity. Uh, and we can see there's the profit coming in. Um, uh, there's a it, it's actually the um, uh, let me just get the right period. Um, uh, so here, here's here's the profit. Yeah, there it is. There's the 60 million of profit. Um, uh, and these guys are paying out dividends. So no share buybacks at um, uh, at Wix. It's all dividends and anything which isn't paid out as a dividend is being reinvested back into the business. OK, so again, a little bit of a distinction there uh, between those two. Um, final uh, look is the cash flow statement. Um uh, always like to look at whether a company is generating cash. And the answer is that for Kingfisher, yes, they are. Um, so uh, decent cash flow generation, a billion pounds. Uh, and then what are they doing with that billion pounds? There's some investment going on, which is the buying property, plant and equipment. Uh, and then what are they, uh, how are they financing it? Well, um, they are, as we talked about, they are buying back their own shares. They are paying out dividends and they are basically paying leases you know that's essentially what they're doing um, with that money okay so they're earning about a billion um they're spending 385 on capex they're spending another billion on financing which means that the overall the the the, uh, the, the cash is going down but they started the year with a billion and they finished with 800 million so they still got enough cash in the bank and we're reasonably comfortable with that um, again, let's have a look at Wix and their cash flow statement. So very similar. Um, here's their operating cash flow. So they are generating cash as well, which is good. Um, again, uh, in fact, we're looking at this number here. Sorry. Um, so they are generating cash. Um, uh, and in terms of the, um, you know, and again, you can see it's kind of, you know, about, you know, a tenth of the size of, of um, a kingfish. Um investing interesting enough um there is a kind of a divestment so um this is uh, a net repayment from 
Travis Perkins group. So these guys will be kind of, you know, it, it, they, they own, you know, some of Travis Perkins group it looks like they've got a, a repayment on a loan perhaps there. Um, so that's a kind of a positive, but you know, that's, that's the investment going on up there. Um, uh, and then there are the, um, uh, the, the, the dividends being paid out uh, and we've got lease payments as well. So very, very similar um, kind of numbers coming through that. So um, there is our kind of our compare and contrast. Um, you know, there's there's nothing really kind of jumping out, um, uh, jumping out at us. You know, they don't really have any, um, uh, you know, they don't have any debt. Their return on capital is, you know, Wix has got a 24 percent return on capital. Kingfisher, 18 percent. Probably uh, that lower number for Kingfisher because it's grown organic. Uh, so it's grown through acquisition. So it pays a lot of money uh, to buy, you know, other businesses and, and bolt them in. Whereas Wix is obviously very much around this organic growth, um, uh, you know, growing uh, uh, by, you know, just just selling more, opening up new stores, et cetera, et cetera. So you'd expect to see a, a high return on capital because you need less capital if you're not going to go out and buy and pay premium amount um, for other businesses um so we talked about um uh, the the liquidity no real concerns on the liquidity side um uh and you know cash flow uh, for both businesses uh looking relatively um comfortable so let's go and have a look at the um the share price now um, uh, and, and see how they've been performing. So we'll start off with Kingfisher. Here is Kingfisher. Um, so market cap for Kingfisher. So quite a bouncy ride for Kingfisher, up and down. And sort of, you know, if you're a day trader, you probably like this volatility. And if you're a long-term investor, you're probably a little bit more nervous. You can see, you know, there is the pandemic um, uh, uh, coming very, very clear. Um, uh, and actually, then suddenly everyone realizing that we're all stuck at home and we're going to be um, doing some DIY. I painted my house during lockdown, um, uh, and therefore you know the kind of the share price goes all the way up um uh, and then it kind of kind of continues all the way up uh, and then it's been coming off the boil ever since and now it's been bouncing back up again so market cap uh 500 uh, 5.5 billion okay so just so that we understand that is uh, about uh, um uh, 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 I've got it down as about six and a half times earnings so that, you know, here the Google says 8.87. So, you know, you're kind of, you know, it's, it's relatively cheap. You know, that's a yield. That's an earnings yield of about, you know, 10%, over 10%, for example. So, you know, this is a, you know, this is pretty high. The dividend yields relatively low at 4.6%, but don't forget some of that profit is being used to buy back shares, which is another way of returning money. So I like to, rather than just look at the dividend yield, let's look at the dividend and share buyback yield. We get about 8.7%. So very nearly 9% in terms of the yield that you're getting. Don't forget inflation running pretty high. So we like companies with a with a high um, uh, uh, sort of yield rate. Um, and again, suggesting that maybe, you know, there's some capital growth in here if these guys are going to carry on with their share buyback. So if that's Kingfisher, let's have a look at Wix. So Wix, much smaller, as we'd expect. So only 393 million, um, which is, again, by my estimate, about 6.7 times earnings. Um, uh, Google have got it down to 7.42, probably some updated figures in there. Um, again, looking relatively cheap. So, you know, it, it, you know, they're both on a, on a, you know, if you take the yield and tur turn it upside down, you're looking at about, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15% yield uh, in terms of the earnings. Dividend yield, 8%. Uh, uh, 8 I've got it down as 9%. Um, don't forget that, you know, that Wix are paying out everything as a dividend. So that dividend yield, we can't compare Wix and uh, Kingfisher in terms of the dividend yield, but what we can do is take kingfisher's dividend and share buyback yield um, and add those two numbers together and they're pretty similar so these guys you know i, I think the kind of conclusion is that they look they look pretty cheap you know they look pretty cheap in terms of their earnings multiple they've got high yields they're paying out dividends um uh, you know unless unless you know they can completely fall off the uh, fall off the, uh, the the shelf and maybe you know we talk about you know housing markets and sort of slow down and maybe people aren't building more houses but if you're not building houses if you can't afford to move uh, if you're in negative equity 
maybe that's where you do a little bit more DIY. You get the builders in, you get yourself a new kitchen, new bathroom, whatever it is, et cetera, et cetera. But then on the on the counter half, you could say, well, hold on a sec, there's a cost of living crisis. You can't even afford to put food on the table or heat your house. Uh, and therefore, you're not going to be you know, popping down to um, your local DIY store uh, in order to buy uh, power drills. Uh, you can kind of take your pick from those two um, uh, comments. And I'm sure Johnny will give us uh, your view um, in a minute. Um, before we do that, though, let's just um, jump back into these two guys and look at their CEOs. Um, uh, so um, if we have a look at, um, uh, we start off with um, Kingfisher. Uh, sorry, I'm on Wix at the moment. Here we go. Here's Kingfisher. So Kingfisher, um, we are looking at a chap called Thierry Garnier. Um, and uh, if we look at page 94 of this document, uh, we can see that Thierry is paid. And there's lots and lots of numbers here, but we're just going to use a nice simple number. Here it is. Two point six million pounds. OK, so he's paid two point six million pounds, which is a nice 85 percent pay rise on the previous year. So uh, somebody's doing very well for themselves. Um, uh, and if we compare that to the average pay um if we dig into the uh in, into the kind of the detail here it is page 141 um uh, we can find that the average here we go um so the average pay you've got about um uh, uh let's see where are we going um uh, so we got the, um, uh, the the number of people employed about 82,000 johnny as you said uh, they're paid about um 2 billion pounds uh, that's an average pay of about £25,000. Interestingly enough, if you run those numbers against the previous um, uh, year, yeah, so I haven't run the numbers against the previous year, so um, 85, um, uh, 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 yeah, so they've got about a, a £25,000 um, average pay. Uh, uh, and so um, Thierry is, I reckon, on about 105 times the average earning. So Thierry, uh, 2.6 million, um, uh, average pay 25,000 is 100 times earnings okay 100 times the average employee um, if we look at Wix on the other hand um, then David Wood is in charge um, and page 93 will tell you um, about David Wood's um, uh, re uh, remuneration here it is so we're just going to choose again this single number uh, we're going to take this number here 1.4 million pounds um, uh, so there is David. So he's earning, you know, what's that? About half, um, uh, half of um, uh, um, uh, of Thierry. You know, he's running a smaller company, um, so he's not getting paid as much um, uh, as um, uh, Thierry. Um, but he's not, he's not earning a tenth by by any means. Um, uh, and if we look at the average pay, um, we can find that on 126. Uh, <coughs> so here is page. 126 uh, staff benefit costs. We can see how many people are working in the business. So there's about 6,484 uh, and they are being paid uh, a total remuneration of 8,438 um, uh, uh, sorry, total uh, employee remuneration. Sorry, my mistake. Got the wrong number there. Um, the total remuneration is 217 um, uh, distributed. So, again, th this is the average full time. So when I'm talking about the kind of the average salary, we're looking at the kind of um, so this this top number is, you know, how many people they employ. But some of them will be on shift workers that only work mornings, only work afternoons. Saturday mornings, that kind of stuff. So the full time equivalent is what we like to do. Compare these two numbers and we get an average salary of just over thirty three thousand pounds, about thirty three thousand six hundred pounds per person, um, which uh, so uh, David Woodson is only earning 42 times the average earnings. So our kind of conclusion is that Thierry is on 100 times the average earnings and the average earnings at Wix is higher than the average earnings at Kingfisher. Make of that what you will. So there you go, Johnny. There is my analysis of Wix and Kingfisher. Um, they look pretty cheap to me, I have to admit. I, you know, there, there's a, you know, something that says that maybe part of a well-diversified portfolio and uh, in, in these days we like income players um, maybe these guys uh, one or both of them uh, might uh, might might make a good appearance um, uh, in, in a in, in your portfolio yeah I mean I, I I'm fairly convinced as well I think you know they do look cheap and and um, there's certainly a lot of appeal in both of them um, I know that some of the directors at, at Kingfisher have been buying um, some stock fairly recently which 
I know it can mean all sorts of things, but arguably it's a good sign if they think there's value in the share price, then you know they're putting their money where their mouth is and and, and that's always interesting. I, I guess maybe you know for all their similarities, there are those differences about their geographical spread and and we've seen a lot in the press recently about the outlook for the UK economy and you know it, it's always been on a slightly sort of different plane to to Europe in many ways and I suppose since Brexit those sort of differences and the the, the dispersion between economic performance is a bit wider and likely to go on being so so maybe for those who are sort of optimistic about the UK's relative prospects um, you might want to look at Wix it's so domestically focused but on the other hand if you're a bit worried about the UK outlook, and I know you know some people certainly are. Then perhaps the fact that Kingfisher is spread more widely over Europe as well as the UK is is something that you might want to consider. So perhaps there's a you know a, a, a way of um, differentiating between them there. Um, you know, just food for thought, really. And also, I suppose with Kingfisher, the fact it is that much bigger. If you're worried about rocky times ahead, perhaps its size as well as its spread offers you some sort of protection or, or reassurance that you know you might be uh, safer in storm tossed seas on their slightly bigger ship than you might than, than you might arguably be with Wix but you know there we are there's some more food for thought there um, I think that was pretty compelling I think, I think I, you're I, right I think go ahead I think you're right Johnny I think you know I mean Kingfisher obviously gives you that diversification um, you know Wix is obviously concentrated in the UK I mean the UK you, you talk about the UK as being an underpriced market um, it's been underpriced for <coughs> for a while um and i can't think of any particular reason why the i mean the uk right now the FTSE 100 is hitting record highs yet it's it's still cheaper than it's almost ever been and you know compared to you know the us markets it's about half the price in terms of the average p /E ratio so i kind of feel that you know if you if you're a backer of the uk and you think actually we are underpriced and, and you know there's going to be a bunch of people going to wake up to the fact that the uk actually does have a lot to offer then maybe wix is a kind of more leveraged play but i think you know you're right kingfisher a little bit more diversified um uh, maybe if you are a little bit more risk averse yeah interesting stuff and I, I i know um as we said you've looked at things a bit differently today and putting those two companies side by side in a similar industry but of a different scale and a different focus is is, is very interesting so you know i don't know if anyone who's who's viewed the video would be kind enough to leave some comments whether you you sort of like that compare and contrast approach and, and think you know it's useful rather than just always focusing on one specific company um let us know you know put some comments below um, share your views. Is is Ted right or wrong? Has he missed something? Is he is he you know not seeing something that you're aware of, or you got a view that differs from his? Always interested to hear that. Um, and like, please, you know, if you if you've enjoyed what you've seen, like it, share it, and uh, and subscribe, and you'll see more of this in the future. And Ted's words of wisdom uh, will come your way. Hello, thank you for watching that video, and I hope you found its contents useful. If you want to know more about what we do here at Talk Financials, you can find out on talkfinancials.com uh, where we uh, will explain how we design, develop and deliver training workshops for companies all over the world. Uh, we've worked with over 300 companies in over 35 countries around the world, uh, helping them to understand financial statements, to understand uh, business finance and to become fluent in the language of business finance. Uh, if you're interested in, in developing your own skills in how you read and interpret financial statements, um, I, I've developed an online workshop, uh, which is available. All you've got to do is click on the QR code there, uh, point your camera at the QR code, um, and that will take you through to an online workshop. Uh, and it will help you to improve your own ability to read and interpret financial statements. Uh, I've also written a book called How to Talk Finance. Uh, and again, that is available. Um, if you click on the QR code, it'll take you through to the Amazon website where you can buy the book either as a hard copy or as a Kindle edition. Um, and that's really everything from me. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, it'd be great to stay in touch. If you'd like to contact me, um, then again, just click on the QR code um, uh, and send me a message. Uh, and good luck with uh, your financial analysis. I hope it goes well.